uh, but she was focused on more than anything else, our capacity to be resilient and to meet challenges head on, our capacity as human beings to refocus our energies, our sense of purpose, and a sense of optimism and faith that will get through times challenging, uh, times uh, like today, difficult moments that all of us are working through uh, to reconcile the world we're living in, to reconcile the need to pay our rent, our mortgage, to understand whether or not we could educate our kids at home with all of the other burdens and challenges that we face uh, within the household and, and where we're going uh, as a state and as a nation. Uh, the old adage, we're nothing but a mirror of our consistent thoughts. Whatever we tend to focus on, we find more of. And if you're like me, you're focused on the nightly news 24-7 cycle, seven days a week, there's a lot of anxiety uh, running through uh, those broadcasts, a lot of fear uh, that is induced uh, focusing on what this nation and the world is doing to meet this pandemic head on. That stress is manifest, that stress is real. And all of us work through that stress differently. Uh, no one can moralize how some people deal with it versus others. Uh, some people are coping quite well. Others are struggling, understandably. Struggling because they lost their job and they don't have a paycheck. Struggling because their kids aren't at school. Struggling uh, in ways uh, where they're having a hard time sleeping, where they're a little bit shorter, a little more irritable, uh, and they're prone uh, to doing things that aren't healthy. Uh, they may be drinking more than they should. I don't just mean adult beverages, high sugar drinks. They may not be uh, taking time to, to breathe. They may not even be taking time uh, to reflect uh, on, uh, on their own health uh, and the need to exercise, to hydrate, uh, and to focus uh, on reaching out and embracing uh, someone else or calling for help calling a friend and saying, you know what, can I just talk? Uh, we recognize, I recognize, we all, I think, recognize uh, the nature of this moment. And I just want folks to know that staying at home doesn't mean you're alone. That as a state, we are here to do what we can to support you uh, and to be there at a time of need. Uh, I've tasked the uh, Surgeon General of the State of California, Dr. Nadine Harris-Burke, to put together a strategy and a protocol to help support you and to support caregivers that need the peer-to-peer -peer support, a little you know, psychological first aid uh, themselves to get through the day and to continue to thrive, not just survive in terms of the workload uh, as they're taking care of people uh, all throughout the state of California. I've asked her to consider not only the physical health needs of Californians in the context of addressing the issues of this virus, but the brain health needs, the mental health. After all, the brain is part of the body, and there's nothing to be ashamed uh, by uh, recognizing uh, your own limitations in terms of the stress uh, and the angst that you may feel. In fact, there's probably no one stronger than when he or she recognizes uh, those stress points. And so we are putting out guidelines. We're putting out guidance, not only uh, to our health plans in the state of California, both on the private side and on the public side, our Medi-Cal system, but we're also putting a playbook together for you, a checklist uh, as adults, as caregivers, uh, but also a checklist for our children, because everything I just said, uh, it's translated very differently into our children. Our children aren't able to communicate uh, words like this, boy, I'm completely stressed out, not a young child maybe a teenager, but not a young child. And they manifest stress very differently. Uh, they have a tummy ache. They may not be sleeping as well. They may be particularly irritable, sort of jumping back and forth. Uh, well, I explained my daughter a few weeks ago as she threw her bed over uh, because she was so upset uh, when I told her it's likely she wasn't going to go back to school uh, and see her friends this school year. Everybody manifests this differently, and our children are most vulnerable because uh, they're not able to communicate as effectively uh, as many of the adults and caregivers. So we have a playbook for them as well, uh, a checklist uh, for our children as well. And we have resources. Uh, we have on our covid19.ca.gov website, covid19.ca.gov website, we have 16 hotlines 
that we have made available, including text chat lines where people can address their particular needs as it relates to uh, domestic violence, um, intimate partner uh, battering. We're seeing increasing in times of stress and the need to get help. You can call that DV hotline. Elder abuse. Uh, we obviously have to take care of our seniors. We have a hotline for that. The child abuse. We have a hotline for that. Teens, teens feeling deep emotional stress uh, that uh, are feeling in crisis. We have teen crisis hotline. All of these things available uh, in many, many languages, up to 170 languages in some uh, instances. LGBTQ and their unique challenges across the spectrum, uh, supports, substance abuse, alcohol abuse, all of those hotlines, all of those resource sites are available on covid19.ca.gov uh, to help support you uh, during these times of needs. There's also concern, and I'll ask the doctor to come up in a second, around secondary health effects. We talk about your physical health as it relates to making sure we stay at home, we practice physical distancing, we continue to do what we must in terms of our personal hygiene, washing our hands, and the like. Uh, but it's also true that stress hormones create the kind of anxiety that induces other secondary effects. It impacts your blood pressure. It impacts your heart and can increase the likelihood of a stroke. It can impact your diabetes. Uh, it can certainly uh, impact uh, your sense of well-being and depression uh, and the like. And so the secondary health impacts are a big part of what we're also looking uh, to uh, uh, respond to. And that's, again, the purpose of the guidance we're putting out today uh, and the incredible work uh, that our Surgeon General has been doing to integrate the behavioral mental health side of the world and the substance abuse side of the world. She's been working for many, many weeks uh, to put together the guidance uh, that we're putting out today and to meet uh, these challenges head on and to be there and extend a hand for you at this time of great stress uh, and need. And so uh, I shouldn't uh, belabor this. Let me just ask her to come on up. Uh, and your Surgeon General, we're proud as a state of California to have our own Surgeon General, uh, but her expertise has been and continues to be trauma-informed care, uh, a world expert in this space, and she's bringing that expertise to help address uh, this moment uh, so all of us can work through that fear and anxiety as we all are capable of doing with resiliency uh, and the capacity to adapt to the moment as long as we have the support to get through this moment. With that, Dr. Burke Harris. Thank you, Governor. The actions we're all taking to slow the spread of coronavirus, physical distancing, hand washing, wearing masks and proper disinfecting are critically necessary and remain the top priority. But while we keep our physical distance, it, our social supports to maintain emotional and spiritual connection are more important than ever for our physical and mental health. The health impacts of coronavirus go beyond infection and COVID disease. It is important to recognize that stress related to the pandemic that many are feeling right now, compounded by the economic distress due to lost wages, employment, and financial assets, plus school closures and sustained physical distancing, can trigger the biological stress response, which also has an impact on our health and well being. During times of heightened stress, our bodies make more stress hormones, including adrenaline and cortisol. And these can affect our health, our behaviors, and our emotions. Overactivity of the stress response can be associated with a variety of symptoms, some of which are familiar and others that are less well known. Familiar symptoms include changes in sleep patterns or appetite, mood changes such as anxiety, depression, or anger, an increased risk of substance use or dependence, and family violence. 
However, health conditions such as headache, abdominal pain, and digestive difficulties, increased blood pressure or blood sugar, asthma exacerbations, and increased risk of infection are also associated with an overactive stress response. It's important to know that these changes aren't just in your head. And to begin to identify how stress shows up for you, physically, emotionally, and behaviorally. Individuals who have a history of trauma or adversity may also be at greater risk. The good news is that there are simple ways, simple things that you can do every day at home to protect your and your family's health. Safe, stable, and nurturing relationships help to protect our brains and bodies from the harmful effects of stress and adversity. Healthy nutrition, regular exercise, mindfulness like meditation, good sleep hygiene, and staying connected to our social supports and getting mental health care all help to decrease stress hormones and improve our health. We've brought together evidence-based guidance in the Surgeon General's playbook on stress relief during COVID-19 and an additional playbook for caregivers and kids that offers practical tools and tips that you can add to your daily routine. We've also developed guidance for health plans and healthcare providers on addressing stress-related health concerns during this pandemic, including how to implement trauma-informed care and supporting provider resilience. That information is available at acesaware.org. If you are concerned about the effects of stress on your health, call your doctor or your mental health professional. And if you need help finding resources, visit the Emotional Support and Wellbeing homepage at covid19.ca.gov.